Hi there everybody, my name is Michael Maffey. I'm a recruiter here for Family Residences and today we're going to do a little iSIMS training with you. Uh, this module is specifically going to be targeting how to create a job in the system. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that you'll have to know about iSIMS is that it's not something that lives on your desktop, so you're not going to see this anywhere as one of your applications. What you're actually going to have to do is log in through either Internet Explorer or preferably Google Chrome if your computer has it. Uh, so in order to access iSIMS through the web browser, you're going to type into the search bar www.familyres.icims.com and there you'll see the login page. If you haven't been set up with a login yet, contact your recruiter uh, and they'll get you set up with a login as quickly as possible. Um, so we have this test residential supervisor login here. So we're going to use this to go in. Once you get your credentials and you log in, this will be the first page that you're going to see. Uh, this is the welcoming page for iSIMS and it's also going to be your main dashboard. Uh, so as you're navigating iSIMS, if you want to get back to this page, you're going to access it by pressing the iSIMS button uh, in the top left hand corner and you'll see if you click that, it'll bring you right back to this page that you start on. Um, so what I recommend to all the hiring managers who are starting off in this program is to take a look at this panel over here on the right where it says jobs. You'll see that there are six uh, little dots right here. This is so that you can grab the unit and move it over so that it's part of your main screen. So you can see all of your jobs, the open jobs, pending jobs, uh, jobs that still need approval and closed jobs. All of these will be available for your viewing. Uh, and then so let's get started. So, um, and so you're going to create a job by going up into the top left hand corner and selecting the create button. When you select create, you'll see that the only option here is job. So you're going to go ahead and click on job. Once you're into the create a job section, uh, you'll see that there is a template drop down under general information tab. From here, you're going to select a template that is most relevant to the job that you are trying to create. So for most of our hiring managers, especially in our residential divisions, uh, the most popular job that you'd be looking to hire would be a direct support professional. So we're going to use this for today's example. Um, so now that we've selected this template, you'll see that some forms, uh, I mean some items have already pre-populated. So, uh, you know, that's useful. And then you'll see a bit more of that on the next page. Uh, but so the first thing that you're going to see here is that the job title is is one of the first things that we have to take care of. Um, and so what you're going to do with this, we no longer include the shift. So you're going to take the shift out of the program because uh, we don't want to discourage anybody from applying that may not fit a specific schedule. So we're just going to insert the program title here. So let's just say um, the program title is... Uh, Oakdale. So this would be the name of the program that we're going to include here on the post. Uh, as you can see, the job category direct service professional has already been selected from the template that we're using. And then you're going to move on to employment type. Now, this is based upon the number of authorized hours that you're looking to hire for. So for example, full time would be somebody that works 35 hours or more. Um, part time eligible for benefits. Uh, that would be anybody that works more than 24 but less than 35 hours. So it's from 24 really to 34. Uh, and then part-time not eligible for benefits would be anywhere from 8 to 23 hours. And then obviously per diem relief, they have um, either 0 or 8 authorized hours depending on what relief team they fall under. Um, so let's go ahead and say that we're going to hire a full-timer today. Um, so the higher type would be the next section and you can see in these sections here that there's a little red asterisk The red asterisk is indicative of a required field. So if it doesn't have that red asterisk, you can go ahead and skip that section um, But you know if it has a red asterisk, it's going to be required in order for you to post and move on So the higher type we know is something that's required um, So when you click in here, you'll get a drop down again. The two choices are either new or replacement so a new position would be a position that you are getting additional funding for in the program. So for example, if someone's uh, supervision, uh, you know, if their supervision level has changed and now they have enhanced supervision requiring a one-to-one -one, uh, and now you're, you have to create a new position in the program because you got additional budgeting for this, then you would select new. 
but if it already exists on your schedule and the FTEs are already available in the schedule, then you can select replacement because the job already exists, you just need to fill it. Uh, and then if you select replacement, you'll see this box comes up, it says replacing. You see that there's no red asterisk next, next to it, so you do not have to fill this in, but we do ask if you remember who the last person was that could fill the position, that you would fill it in there. Okay, so moving on to number of openings. You're always gonna wanna put in number of openings, even though it's not a required field, uh, just because you do have a certain number of positions open and you wouldn't be creating the job if you didn't. So um, let's just go ahead and say that we're just hiring one person for right now. You'd fill it there. Uh, if you were hiring for multiple positions, let's say you have three or four positions available, you'd put that number in there, and then as you hire people to the post, uh, ISIMS will automatically deduct that number down from four to three to two to one and so on, and eventually will close out the job once there are zero openings remaining. The next section here is going to be the targeted job start date. Uh, so this is going to be an orientation Monday. So if this is... Um, you know, if this is mid middle of the week Wednesday and we are looking to get this person in as soon as possible, we have to be realistic about our expectations. So the recruiting team is likely not going to be able to get this person to commit to coming in the following Monday just because there's a lot of steps in the hiring process that take place between submitting the initial and getting the person into orientation. So you wanna give the recruiting team a little bit of time to work on making those calls and getting those people scheduled. So we would like to ask for at least a week in advance. So. Uh, since orientation happens every Monday, um, the initial we ask to be submitted by the previous Monday. So for this one, we're going to say the targeted job start date is going to be the 2nd, December 2nd. <clears throat> Next, as an uh, important field, you're going to want to indicate which recruiter uh, this job is going to go to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select myself here. And then uh, for the location, um, so you're just gonna type in the name of the location. So for example, if we are hiring, we said for Oakdale, we type in Oakdale here, and then a number of uh, choices will come up, populate from the dropdown. So we'll go ahead and select the Oakdale building right here. So you just type the name of the program into the location box. Uh, next is divisions, and so you'll go and enter the division from the dropdown, whether you're division one, two, three, integrated day and youth services, all of our divisions are up in here. Uh, so we're just gonna select division three for testing purposes. And then the affiliate. The affiliate should auto-populate from the template, but if it doesn't, it's really just um, the affiliates that we have available are family residences, uh, Adelante, Skills, Try, and uh, we're gonna select family residences and essential enterprises. Again, for our residential programs, they're all gonna fall under family residences. And then, uh, then we get to shift. So this is very important because it allows the recruiter and the manager to see what shift they're looking to hire for with this posting. Um, so the, this is not available to the candidate as they're viewing it. Only the job title up at the top is available to the candidates. So we can type in whatever we're looking for specifically here. Let's say we're looking for Sunday through Thursday uh, a.m. So that would be from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and we would indicate it like that. So the days, the hours, and then the authorized hours per week. We indicated that this person's gonna be a full timer. Sunday through Thursday, seven to three, they'll be working 40 hours per week. This section here where it says position contact is useful for anybody that would like to have another person vet the candidates that are coming in. So for example, if a supervisor created a position but wanted their assistant supervisor to monitor the candidates that are coming in, um, then they may indicate that that person should be the one contacted. But if you would like the candidates to contact yourself directly, then just leave it blank and the hiring manager that we already indicated will be the one that will be contacted. Um, in terms of legal entity, that's very similar to the affiliate. For this purpose, we're gonna put family residences, but you would obviously select the one that's most appropriate for you. And then the Aggresso position ID number. Uh, the Aggresso position ID number is something that the hiring manager should already have access to. Uh, they should be given the Aggresso position ID numbers uh, by their operations directors or their VP. But um, if they don't have that, then the hiring manager is able to request that list of all the Aggresso position ID codes for the specific program from their recruiter. So for this test purposes, we're gonna select 0000. zero, zero. 
And then we don't put anything in here in the bottom section where it says compensation. Uh, we don't indicate the annual salary and we don't deal with the requirements such as telecommuting and things like that. So we're ready to move on to the next page with this. When you click next, you'll see that the job description, the overview, and the responsibilities, as well as the qualifications for the position are already pre-populated. This comes from the template that we selected right in the beginning, uh, where we selected direct support professional. Uh, so all of these are pre-populated. We are able to make changes to these uh, if necessary. So the hiring manager would only contact human resources and let us know if there's any changes that need to be made or if you are looking to have specific wording in the posting. Uh, they, you know, it's not one size fits all necessarily, but this is made so that there are very little, if any, changes that are required, uh, you know, from program to program. So then we can just move on and click finish. And so this final stage here is going to be where we begin the approval process. Um, so you'll see in just a second that uh, when you click finish, you're able to create an approver list. And so um, you'll have to look and see where it says add approvers. Right next to that, there's a drop down box. So you'll click into the drop down and add your approvers. So, who should be your approvers? Uh, the first approver that you should have on here should be your supervisor. Um, so, for residential supervisors, this would be the operations directors, um, sometimes maybe a senior supervisor, um, but you would just indicate that person here. So, I'm just going to put in here. Uh, actually, let me put another recruiter. Okay, so the first person that you're gonna enter in here should be the supervisor. The next person will be your recruiter. Okay, so it's very important that you get them in that order because by the time it gets to the recruiter, the recruiter wants to know that the position that you're creating has already been reviewed. So we are looking to see that not only has the supervisor entered the information correctly, but then they sent it to their supervisor, the operations director most in most cases, and that they are at that point reviewing the posting and making sure that the you know, available budget is there, that all the details are accurate to their knowledge, and that the shift is indeed uh, needed for the program. Um, so once, once we select save and begin approval, then these people will be emailed in the order that we list them in. Uh, and then so as soon as the supervisor is finished approving it, then it will shoot to the recruiter who will then review it one more time before posting it. And then it will be posted as soon as everything is confirmed to be accurate. So we'll click save and begin approval. And we are waiting on the uh, approval process to go through. You can see, you can review the approval process by clicking on this tab where it says approval. And you can see that this person was just notified that this job is looking to be posted. And as soon as this approver, uh, gets in there and confirms the approval, it'll move on to the next person. And then once the recruiter has it, it's posted almost instantly. All right, so once you're finished uh, getting the job approvals, uh, or once you're finished listing the approvers for the job and you begin the approval process, you'll see that the job transfers over into your pending approvals. And uh, once this is done, you'll see that the job is assigned a iSIMS job ID number. This is an eight digit number separated by a hyphen, and the first four digits are always going to be the year that the job is created. The last four is randomly assigned by the system. So if you are having any difficulties with being able to um, view the applicants in your job, or if there is a delay in the approval process, what you're going to want to do is reference this job ID number uh, when you're communicating any difficulties to recruiting and or your supervisor. So again, in the top left-hand corner, there should be a job ID number right next to the job, the briefcase here. Uh, and that will be how you reference this job when you're communicating to either human resources or other operations uh, management so that they'll know which job specifically you're talking about. And that's it on how to create a job in ISIMS.